I recently had a friend come to me and ask me, Ryan, why invest in property? Why pursue property over shares or cryptocurrency or the other investment vehicles that are out there? What is it about property that makes it unique? And now that you've got this successful business, why is property your next step? And what are you hoping to achieve through that? So in this video, I wanna talk about 10 of the reasons why you should consider investing in property. What is it about property that makes it so interesting as an investment vehicle and so good as a way to create financial freedom for yourself. The first reason to consider investing in property is that financial freedom won't happen by itself. You're never gonna wake up one day and just magically be financially free. It's something that you need to deliberately pursue and property is a great way to do that. And there is a path to financial freedom through property. There's so many different ways to do that, but there is a clear cut path to financial freedom through property. The most simple of those clear cut paths is to go ahead and buy a property or buy two properties or buy three properties or do the two property to financial freedom strategy that we talked about on this channel before. And the path to financial freedom that is the simplest in property, at least I personally think it's the simplest, is that you purchase these properties with a mortgage from the bank. You have to pay for the mortgage on these properties. So rent comes in and it helps to go and pay for the mortgage on the property, but over time, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, eventually you will pay that mortgage off and these properties that you now own, that money can go into your pocket and you can now live off that. Financial freedom can happen through property. There's some clear cut ways to achieve it, which is one of the reasons that I love property so much. The second reason to invest in property is that it's an income producing asset. So if you're investing in something like silver or gold or Bitcoin, then chances are it's not actually generating you any income at all. It may hold its value. It may go up in value compared to the dollar or compared to fiat currency, but it's not actually producing any income for you. The benefit of property as well as things like stocks is they can actually be income producing assets. So when you purchase a property, then you go ahead and you rent it out. Not only can you get the capital gains from the property, but you're also getting the income from that property. And having that income producing asset means that over time, as we pay off that mortgage, that income can go into our pocket to create financial freedom. I also absolutely love that you can get growth as well on top of that. So you're not just investing for the cash flow. Chances are that property is also going to grow over time as well. Looking at a shorter time span of maybe one to three years, it's often unclear whether a property is going to grow or not. Properties do go in cycles, different cities grow at different times. Sometimes things go back as well, like we saw in Sydney and Melbourne in 2017, 2018, with a reduction of around 10 to 15%. So it can go backwards, but if you look over the long term, let's look at 20 years, let's look at 30 years, let's look at 50 years, how many properties do you see on the market today that are cheaper than they were 20 years ago, cheaper than they were 30 years ago? Can you find a single property today that was cheaper than it was to purchase 50 years ago? Another reason to love property investing is that you can actually manufacture growth or create your own growth through your property. So let's say you're going and investing in stocks. I have nothing against stocks. They can be an incredible way to make money and create financial freedom. Look at Ray Dalio who runs the most successful hedge fund of all time. The dude's a billionaire and he's done it through stocks. If he can do it, then stocks is obviously a great investment tool. But if you invest in something like Apple stocks, Let's go ahead and draw the worst apple of all time here. What that means is you actually own a small percentage of that company. I absolutely love Apple. You can see I've got their computers, I've got their phones. But if you own a small percentage of their company, what can you do to increase their profits? Not really anything. They're a multi, multi billion dollar company. You can maybe buy some Apple products, but other than that, there's no control you have over increasing the value of that stock. However, if you were to go out and to purchase a house, let's say you purchase a house and it's a bit run down, you can now do a renovation on that property in order to increase the value of that house. So you actually have direct control over how much money that property makes. That renovation could also increase the rental income that is coming from the property or even something as simple as marketing it better. So if you've got better pictures online of that house, 
you can actually get higher rent or sell it for better if you present it well versus if you present it poorly. And I'll link up to a video down below where I talked about that with a rental manager who was able to significantly increase the rent of a property just through the pictures alone, not even changing anything. Taking a property that was on the market, unable to be rent, and renting it for more than it was previously listed for. So that ability to manufacture growth and create your own growth is something very unique to property that you're not gonna find in stocks or bonds or cryptocurrency, etc. The fifth reason to love property is how easy it is to leverage. Now leverage means to borrow money to increase what you can purchase. So let's say I wanna buy a property for $500, do I need $500,000 in my bank account to purchase that property? The answer obviously is no, we don't need that 500,000. We might need 10%, we might wanna put down a 20% deposit, plus we've got closing costs of you know maybe six to 8% of that property. So let's say all up we put in around about $100,000 in order to purchase that $500,000 property. So we've only put down 20% all up, and we were able to purchase an asset that is valued much higher than our initial investment or money from our bank account. Now, what happens if this property goes up by 20%? Let's say we get a plus 20% gain on this property. That is a growth of $100,000. We've effectively doubled our money. But let's say we only invested $100,000 of our own cash. And let's say again, here we got 20% growth. Well, we're actually only getting 20 thousand dollars in growth there. So the ability to leverage can actually increase the growth that you get and the money that you make. This does work in reverse as well though. If the property goes down by 20%, you can lose all your money. Whereas if you invested just your money and no leverage, if it went down by 20%, you would only lose that 20,000. And this leads me on to point number six is that property tends to fluctuate less. If we look at the dips in property over the years and the declines that we've seen in different markets, property compared to something like the share market, the fluctuations are a lot less severe in property. Even if we look at the big changes that happened in Sydney and Melbourne, in 2017, 2018 into 2019, we saw a decrease of around about 15%. You know, it's kind of 10 to 20% depending on the area. And in 2019, they actually basically fully recovered. Even in 2020 with coronavirus, they went down a bit, but are now reaching all time highs again. So you're looking at a drop of around about 15% or maybe 20% for some of the more worsely affected areas. Now let's look at what the stock market did when coronavirus hit. You're looking at at least minus 30% hit to the stock market. And that drop in 30% plus happened in just a few days versus the decrease of 15% which happened over the span of around 12 to 18 months. There are definitely some more extreme examples where property can fluctuate a lot more, especially if you're looking at more speculative investments, mining towns, etc. We've seen prices skyrocket rocket and then absolutely plummet in those areas. So this is not true across the board, but as a general rule, if you're investing in high quality metro markets, the fluctuations you're going to get in prices aren't going to be extremely huge. Especially if you're smart about things, and this is point number seven, and you take advantage of market timings. Australia as a property market is not just one big conglomerate of a property market. Not all cities move at the same rate, not all towns grow at the same rate. We saw Sydney and Melbourne grow all the way up into 2016, 2017, and then we saw it decline. At the same time, Brisbane just kind of chugged along and was very steady, hardly grew at all. Hobart had a massive growth cycle and Perth and Darwin both went backwards over the same period. So you're looking at Australia, each and every individual market moves at a different pace, is going to grow at different times. This means that you can actually reduce your risk by investing in markets that haven't grown significantly over the recent period. I did an excellent video with Jeremy Shepard, who I think is the number one expert when it comes to understanding suburb data and what is likely to make a suburb grow. I did a video with him talking about how past growth 
does predict future growth, but not necessarily in the way that you would expect. So if a suburb or an area hasn't grown much in the past, it's much more likely to grow in the near to mid future. So I'll link up to that one down below, go ahead and check it out. But by taking advantage of these market timings, we can reduce our risk and also increase our chance of return. It's something that's really difficult to wrap your head around, but once you understand it, it's absolutely so powerful. And the eighth reason to consider investing in property or why I am considering investing in property is that I am lazy when it comes to this area. I am not lazy when it comes to business. That is my focus. That is where I put my energy and my effort and growing things. I spend every day kind of thinking about that. I'm putting a lot, a lot of energy into business. Now business gives me increased income, which gives me surplus cash, which I need to put somewhere in order to deliver that long-term financial freedom. Now I could do something like day trading and go back and forth in that. But again, that's going to suck up my time. But investing in property and look, stocks have this value as well. I can purchase a property. I can rent that property out. I can hold that property for the long term and I don't really need to do a lot. Yes, there may be some maintenance issues that come up. You know, we may have kind of a toilet. This is, oh my gosh, that's the worst toilet seat in the world. A toilet may break, I might need to fix it, but I'm not personally going there to fix it. I just need to pay to get it fixed. So I may do renovations over the years. I may knock down and rebuild. So I may build a new property on it. So there are ways to be more active and we talked about manufacturing growth with that, but you can set and forget. You can purchase the property, hold it, use the rental income in order to pay off the mortgage over time and just have a really basic, really simple, slow and lazy strategy where I just hold this asset over time, I pay off the mortgage over time, eventually I own it outright and then any money goes into my pocket. So over the long term, over a 20 year period, purchasing a property, paying it off over time, I know that I can achieve wealth and achieve financial freedom without needing to be a super active investor. So for me personally, I want to be active in my business. I wanna grow that, I'm passionate about that. And then I just wanna funnel money into something that is simple and something that allows me to be a lazy investor. So that is my motivation, but you can be as active or passive as you want. Number nine is that interest rates are low and we are talking lowest of the low, the lowest they have ever been. Will they stay low forever? Look, probably not, but right now they're extremely low. If you try to put your money right now in a bank account, how much interest are you going to make on that? In most cases, it's going to be under 2% return on that money. If you look at inflation, right? you're looking at over 2% inflation. We may even have an inflation problem at the moment, but you're effectively losing money by putting it in a bank account. You're not earning enough. You also have to go ahead and pay tax on that money that you earn. Then money is losing value through inflation. So all up, you're kind of going backwards by doing that because interest rates are so low. This also means you've got an increased chance of positive cash flow. Positive cash flow means you've got more money coming in from your property than you have going out into things like mortgage, maintenance, insurance, manager fees, etc. So you have a better chance of positive cash flow. You've also got inflation working in your favor because as inflation goes up and the value of money goes down, rents also have a tendency to rise with inflation. So because interest rates are low at the moment, we can get positive cash flow at the moment. Moment. It also gives us that time for rents to go up. So then eventually when interest rates do rise, hopefully we've got that buffer in place that our property will still be positive cash flow and isn't taking money out of our pocket. And the last thing for me, point number 10, is that I know that property can give me long-term success. Now we've kind of already touched on this where I'm a lazy investor, I wanna focus on business. We've also touched on this in the way that property can deliver financial freedom. But what I love about property is just how nearly certain it is to give long-term success 
if you have a good strategy in place. If you're not being crazy speculative, if you're not doing big developments that could lose a lot of money if they don't go well, or if something catastrophic doesn't happen to the property market, the formula for success is pretty simple and the chances of achieving long-term success are pretty easy. Again, coming down to that simple strategy of purchasing property that generates rental income. You could do the two property to financial freedom strategy where you build a granny flat on that to generate even more income or you could just buy more properties that generate income in order to land bank and to get more growth at the same time. I am not in this for the short game. I am not in this to try and make a mozza over the next one to three years. I actually don't need financial freedom. My businesses give me financial freedom and I love running my businesses. So I'm super happy to work for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Work is something that I am passionate about. Work is something that brings me purpose in my life. I actually get depressed when I'm not working and not driving towards something. So I'm happy to work, but I also want that long-term financial freedom. And I also want security in my life so that if my businesses do go down, I can still afford to pay for my house, to pay for food for my kids and clothes and all the things that they need and pay for my lifestyle. Property allows me to focus on my business and the purpose in my life but allows me to invest. And that cash flow from the property can go back into paying off the mortgage, helping me to own it outright. And then at the end of the day, when I own a bunch of different properties outright, and they are mine, I've got no mortgage on them or anything like that, I don't need to worry about interest rates anymore. I don't need to worry about the banks. I don't even need to worry about whether or not those properties are going up in value or going down in value, as long as those properties are being rented and that money is being funneled back into me and my pocket and my lifestyle, then I can achieve that long-term success. So there you have 10 different reasons that you should consider investing in property. What did you think of these? Is there one that really stood out to you? Do you think I missed some of them? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you're thinking that yes, you want to invest in property, but you need help getting a strategy that's going to get you to your property investment goals, then the team over at Pumped On Property do offer free strategy sessions. So you can jump on the phone with them, talk through your situation, where you're at, and get some insight into the market, as well as insight into what strategy could lead to what you deem as success. So go to onproperty.com.au forward slash strategy to learn more about those free strategy sessions. Pick a time that suits you, get on the phone, get this sorted, and work towards that long-term success and financial freedom you desire. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, stay positive.